So it's the end of yet another week, and here on this channel that means one thing and one thing only. Every weekend I post an episode of this series we do called Your Take Not Mine, where I turn to you, the viewers, to give me your hottest NBA takes of the week based on what's going on at the time, and I then choose my favorite submissions and discuss them in a video. This week, the second round of the NBA playoffs officially got underway, after a thrilling first round came to a close, where some teams took care of business as expected, others experienced some ups and downs, and others put up a strong fight with some incredibly competitive games going down every night, so of course, we have plenty to discuss. In order to submit your takes, I make a community post on either the day of or the day before the video, similar to the one that you see on your screen now, so if you want a chance to be featured in a future episode, be sure to stay on the lookout for that. Before we start though, I want to thank PrizePix for sponsoring this video. PrizePix is the perfect service for all of us basketball fans here because when you're involved, it makes watching the games every night so much more fun and engaging. Basically, it's an application that provides you with lines on all kinds of individual player props such as points, rebounds, assists, three-pointers made amongst others, and you simply have to choose whether you believe they will record over the set amount in the line or under the set amount in the line. Make your selections, wager however much you want to, and if your picks hit, you can win some big money. For some picks that I'm looking at making for today's slate of games, I'm thinking of going with James Harden to score over 23.5 points, Bam Adebayo to grab over 9.5 rebounds, and Tobias Harris to make over 1.5 threes. If this sounds at all intriguing to you, then go use the link down in the description of the video to sign up today and use promo code REFERENCE to receive a 100% deposit match bonus up to $100. Once again, thank you to PrizePix for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the topic at hand. The first take we'll be discussing today comes to us from an account by the name of James Harden, funnily enough, and they say that the idea of super teams has now become overrated because of how much more talent there is in the league now compared to when the super team era began, and super teams are no longer a shoe in to win the rings because of it. So this take obviously comes about because of the Brooklyn Nets and the way that their season ended, and honestly, it's an interesting idea to think about. On paper, the Nets were supposed to be way too dominant offensively for any team to match up with them, because Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving are two of the most dynamic and explosive scorers in the entire league, then their role players were made up almost entirely of knockdown shooters. But unlike prior years where top-heavy teams can dominate, we're now seeing a shift back to contending teams needing to be balanced and deep in different areas, most importantly on both sides of the ball. Where the Nets struggled was on defense, because they lacked a real interior threat to protect the rim, their backcourt was filled with players that struggled to defend the perimeter, and with that kind of combination, it won't matter how many points you score if you're giving up more on the other end. Now, bringing it back to the idea that some teams today being more talented than in the past, I think this notion actually does apply in the sense that role players today are much better scorers and shooters of the basketball than they used to be, and it's because the game has shifted more towards shooting three-pointers than ever before, so young players are training their shooting much more than they used to. There are way more 20-point scorers in the league today than there were just 10 years ago, which I feel like it backs that up. And because there is so much offensive talent in the league now, being able to dominate defensively is becoming more important than ever, hence why the Nets failed and teams like the Celtics and Bucks are favored to come out of the Eastern Conference now. The next take we'll be discussing today comes to us from Caden, and he says that the playoffs this year showed us why Nikola Jokic should not have been the MVP this season, as he proved to be a liability defensively that the Warriors exploited throughout their first round series. Now, you all know that when I published my awards selection video, my pick for MVP this season was Joel Embiid, so overall I'm in agreement being on the side picking against Nikola Jokic, but being completely 
objective here, I disagree with the idea that the playoffs exposed Jokic as an undeserving candidate or anything like that. Do I agree with the fact that the MVP award isn't just an offensive award like Caden said? Yeah, I do. Do I believe winning matters in these discussions? Also, yes, I definitely do. That's why I leaned towards Embiid in the regular season too, which is what the award is based on, because these things were all present then, just as they were present in the playoffs. The MVP award is not based on anything that goes on in the postseason, so the overall message this particular take is sending isn't accurate, but if anything, it just brought to light on a bigger stage, the flaws that got largely ignored throughout most of the regular season. Jokic is an improved defender, but he is not a good defender, and I don't care what the advanced metrics say because the fact of the matter is that most of those metrics the people use to try to say that Jokic is a good defender don't accurately measure defensive impact and get heavily skewed by things like rebounding, which isn't what defense is, it's rebounding that's something separate. Hence why Andre Drummond in his Pistons days used to always rank near the top of those kind of rankings as well despite not being a great defender either. Jokic is still absolutely a valid MVP candidate, but for all of the reasons I just discussed, it's why he was not my personal selection. And finally, the last take we'll be discussing today comes to us from Hamal, and he says that Giannis is going to face the toughest challenge of his life in the series against the Celtics because of their dominant defense. Well, I'm cheating a little bit because I got to see the Bucks win game one before publishing this video, so I already have an idea of how the matchup is going so far, and in game one, Giannis was, surprise surprise, the best player on the court by a mile, and he led his Bucks team to a fairly comfortable Game 1 victory on the road. After the Celtics had just swept the Brooklyn Nets in the first round, I understand why people would believe that they would carry that momentum over to this series to clamp up Giannis similar to how they locked up Kevin Durant, but there are a few massive differences between Giannis and Durant that will make for a much taller task for the Celtics. The Celtics were the best defense in the league this year, so obviously they should be equipped as anyone to slow Giannis down, but the way they do so is not going to be the same way that they did it to Durant. Durant is not a physical player like Giannis is, and he naturally likes to settle for jumpers as is because of how skilled he is as a shooter at his size, but the Celtics outmuscled him on the ball and made those jumpers that he settled for as difficult as possible. Giannis, on the other hand, doesn't settle for jumpers like that nearly as much, and you probably can't bully him like that because he's the one who typically does the bullying. Giannis gets into the paint, and most importantly, is a more willing passer than Kevin Durant is, so especially in Game 1, when the Celtics tried to get physical with him, he simply found the open man and the Bucks capitalized by knocking down their shots, with Giannis recording 12 assists in the game. The Celtics are not out of this series because of one loss by any means, but they will need to figure out a new plan of attack if they want to turn things around. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about the takes we discussed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.